Hey there guys, how are you? See, that right there is why I'm not a serial killer. <sighs> I can't even drink it with a mask on. Ah, so good. The first thing I want to say is this is by far the best sequel we've ever gotten since the original Halloween film in the 1970s. But then again, that's not saying much since one of those sequels starred Buster Rhymes in a little scene that I'm about to show you, which really happened. This was in a movie. Here it goes. Enjoy this scene. I know I did. So you want to be on Danger Entertainment? Let's see what you got. Why? Now going into this movie, I was super excited. This was one of my most anticipated movies of 2018. I love Halloween time. I love a good horror film. And when it comes to the original Halloween film, which I remember watching as a kid on VHS in my grandmother's basement, I um, it, it's still that thought terrifies me to this day. I remember it vividly every time I close my eyes, and that's why I sleep with a flashlight and a butter knife. But anyway, that first film is the definition of perfection in so many ways. I think from a technicality standpoint, a storytelling standpoint, it's so streamlined and has a film noir vibe to it. And just some of the shots in that film and the score, it's lightning in a bottle when it comes to the first Halloween film. And speaking of the original Halloween film, if you want to watch that along with some of the sequels and tons of other horror films, you can do that for free on Shudder for 30 days with my promo code FLICKPICK linked down below. And big thanks to Shudder for sponsoring this video and making videos possible, and also giving you guys a free 30-day trial to go watch all the horror films you want on their service. If you don't know what Shudder is, it's a premium streaming video service from AMC Networks featuring a great collection of thrillers, horror, and suspense. Shudder has the largest, fastest growing, human-curated selection of thrilling, dangerous entertainment. Shutter provides unlimited ad-free access on all your favorite devices for only $4.99 a month or $49.99 a year. Shutter has a unique library of exclusive and original films, series, horror classics, and blockbuster hits, which are updated every week to keep the selection fresh. Current Shutter exclusives include last year's Kuso by Flying Lotus, Mayhem by Joe Lynch, or Sequence Break by Graham Skipper. I've been using Shudder the entire month of October to watch a crap ton of horror films, and I've been catching up on some of the Alfred Hitchcock films that I've never seen. There's tons of movies on there, tons of great horror films, and like I said, if you guys want to try it 30 days completely free, just enter in the promo code FLICKPICK by using the link down below. This Halloween film is directed by David Gordon Green and stars Jamie Lee Curtis returning once again, and the best thing about this movie is it pretends like all of the other sequels never happened. And even early on in the movie, there's a group of teenagers walking down the street and they're talking about the legend of Michael Myers. And one guy's like, oh yeah, did you hear Michael Myers had a sister? And they're like, yeah, that's just a rumor. That never happened. So the writers of this movie are really trying to get that point across that none of the sequels actually happened and they're retconned from history. So no more Buster Rhymes, no more Paul Rudd. Fuck up. Now at times throughout this new Halloween film, there are sequences that are suspenseful and terrifying to watch. Not as many as I had hoped for, but there are one or two scenes that I do remember about this film and thought they were very well done. There's a scene where Michael Myers is stalking his prey and they're in this backyard and there's this security motion activated light above this house. And every time they move, the light goes on, but every time they stop, the light goes off. And slowly but surely, Michael Myers keeps inching his way forward. And throughout this new Halloween movie, there's tons of callbacks to the original film. There's almost shot-for-shot -shot scene recreations from the original film where they switch things up just a little bit. And if you're a huge fan of the original movie, during the climax of this movie, there's one shot in particular that just as a fan, you go, ooh, I like that. Now, a few more positives about the movie before we dive into the negatives. And I have a ton of negatives about this movie. But I want to say, most importantly, they got the characters of Michael Myers and Laurie Strode right. Those are the two main characters I wanted to see done well, and they did them. They executed them. I enjoyed their characters, especially Jamie Lee Curtis's character this time around. She's a little bit kooky. She's a recluse, and she's very paranoid. And for good reason, she was almost murdered when she was a teenager, and I understand. I mean, I don't really understand because I wasn't almost murdered as a teenager, but if I was, I would be doing the same thing she's doing. She's really prepping. She's getting ready. She has her house on lockdown. She's been training. She knows how to shoot shotguns, rifles. She has floodlights, bars on her windows. She's ready to go. She's almost Macaulay Culkin if 
Macaulay Culkin was going to be murdered, which the Wet Bandits did almost want to murder Macaulay Culkin at the end of the first movie. They threatened to bite off his fingers. Huh. No one really talks about that. They were going to kill that kid and bite his fingers off. Huh. First thing I'm going to do is bite off every one of these little fingers one at a time. Now let's talk about the negatives, and I almost want to put the mask on when I do this so you guys can't blame me for not liking the movie as much as you think I should. In my opinion, opening scenes should set the tone of the film, and the opening sequence to this new Halloween film was a little bit underwhelming to say the least for me. I expected more, I wanted something that just blew my hair back, because if you compare this film to the original Halloween film, which is only fair because it's considered a direct sequel now, Look at that opening shot in the first film. It's a POV shot of a little kid killing his sister, and it's a great tracking shot, and it's it's memorable. No one's going to remember this film for starting out with two podcasters going to meet Michael Myers with a really cringe-inducing sequence. And speaking of those two podcast characters in this film, they don't matter. They're just pretty much there, just like half of the characters in this film. They're just in there. They're filler characters, and so much time is dedicated to setting them up and getting to know them, and they have little subplots, but none of it matters at all. It just leads to nothing. It's all a waste of time. And it almost felt like the movie gets distracted at times, and tonally, the movie shifts quite often. Throughout the film, there's some comedy, and it felt very improv and the film is written and produced by Danny McBride, and it felt like his comedy style every time somebody was making a joke in this film. For example, the dad in this movie makes peanut butter penis jokes for like two minutes, and you're thinking, okay. But the worst thing this movie has to offer is the new incarnation of Dr. Loomis, who at one point in the movie, Laurie Strode even says, oh, you're the new Dr. Loomis. It's pretty spot on. And his character is terrible. I know what they were thinking. They thought, hey, we gotta switch things up. But sometimes, some things are best left untouched. And I thought there was 20 other ways they could have handled his character and sort of gotten the same outcome in the movie that they did. But his character is there and it's unnecessary and it sort of will ruin the movie for you. Or at least it did for me. This film at times feels a little bit jarring and as far as the atmosphere goes of this film, I thought the original captured that atmosphere perfectly. This film at times, it doesn't allow you to get immersed into it because like I said, the tone switches up so much you can't really just lose yourself in this movie as much as you want to. So before I give you my grade, there's one final positive I do want to mention about this movie, and that was the final showdown between Laurie Strode and Michael Myers. I enjoyed all the traps and booby traps that she set up in her house. It reminded me of Home Alone, but it also reminded me of another horror film, Nightmare on Elm Street, where Nancy essentially does the exact same thing to trap Freddy at the end of that movie. So I'm willing to say this movie took some inspiration from that idea. They're both very similar. So with all that said, I'm going to give this movie uh, a C+. Go check it out if you're a Halloween fan. I think most people will like this movie, but there's so many things I was frustrated by when watching this film. And at times it's a really good movie, but at other times it's like they forgot which movie they were making and made a lot of bad decisions, which were frustrating for me. So those are my thoughts on Halloween. <sighs> Now here's my question for you guys and let me know down below what did you guys think about this new Halloween movie or what is your favorite scene in a horror film of all times? Not, not the scariest scene, just something from a technical standpoint that just really impressed you. I would say the POV tracking shot in the first Halloween was really amazing and ahead of its time. So as always guys, thanks for watching, make sure you subscribe, click that notification button, give the video a thumbs up, leave a comment down below. And uh, make sure you subscribe, and <laughs> I'll see you guys next time. Take care.